Hello, English learners, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco, and I'm Erica. Erica, today we are really excited, right? Yeah, we've got a great lesson today, all about real English. Exactly, English that you hear in movies and TV shows. Yeah, speaking of movies. Today's podcast takes place at the movies. Exactly, and that's why it's so fun today. Uh huh. Okay, great. So before we listen to our dialogue, let's take a look at our vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. In today's vocabulary preview, we have two words, and the first word is inconsiderate. 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 So, Erica, what is it when someone is inconsiderate? If someone's inconsiderate, they're not thinking about the feelings of other people. Right. So, for example, yesterday I was on the subway and it was full. Right. And an old lady was standing there, and no one got up to give her. Their seat. That was pretty inconsiderate. Okay, great. So now let's take a look at our second word, and it's keep it down. Keep it down. Keep it down. Keep it down. So why don't we listen to some examples on how we use keep it down so we can understand? Example one. Excuse me, do you mind keeping it down? It's after midnight. Okay, I'm sorry. Example two. I'm trying to study. Do you mind keeping it down? Example three. You mind keeping it down? I'm trying to watch the game. So that means be quiet. Yes, don't make so much noise. I used to hear this one all the time from my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all did when we were children. Yeah. Okay, so now let's listen to the dialogue for the first time. It's gonna be kind of fast. But don't worry about it if you can't understand everything. By the end of today's lesson, you will understand this dialogue. Those people in front of us are making so much noise. It's so inconsiderate. Don't worry about it. It's not such a big deal. No, I can't hear a thing. Excuse me. Can you keep it down? Sure. Sorry about that. Someone's phone is ringing. Honey, I think it's your phone. Did you forget to switch it off? Oh no, you're right. <sighs> That's so embarrassing. Do you mind keeping it down? I'm trying to watch a movie here. Well, I hate it when people's phones ring when I'm watching a movie. <laughs> I think everyone gets kind of、uh, angry, but we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Why don't we take a look now at our language takeaway? Language takeaway. So the language takeaway is our most important words for today's lesson, and our first word today is. Not such a big deal. Not such a big deal. Not such a big deal. So when something is not a big deal, it's not a big problem. It's not important, right? Exactly. Okay, let's listen to some examples. Example one. I can't get these files to you by tomorrow. It's okay. It's not such a big deal. Example two. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm gonna be ten minutes late for the meeting. It's not such a big deal. Peter and Liam are late too. Now let's look at our second word, and it's switch it off. Switch it off. Switch it off. Switch it off. So this word means to turn it off. To turn something off. Now we can use it in three different ways. Yeah, this one is a little bit complicated because it changes a little bit depending on how you use it. So Marco, I think you've got some examples for us. Right. So for example, I can say, 
Did you switch off your phone? Or you could say, Did you switch your phone off? Right. Or simply you can ask, Did you switch it off? I think this one is a little bit hard. Let's look at a couple more examples. Okay. So I can say, for example, Switch off the TV. Switch the TV off. Or switch it off. Yeah, I think that's a little bit more clear. Yeah. But you know what? We even had trouble with that one, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we had to do it a couple of times. Okay, now let's look at our last word, and it's can't hear a thing. Can't hear a thing. I can't hear a thing. Can't hear a thing. Okay, we have some examples for this phrase, so let's listen. Example one. What's going on in there? I don't know. I can't hear a thing. Example two. What? I'm sorry, this music is too loud. I can't hear a thing. So that's like saying, I can't hear. Exactly. I can't hear anything. It's too loud. Right. So now we are ready to listen to our dialogue a second time. It's going to be slower. This time, listen for some of the key words we were explaining. Those people in front of us are making so much noise. It's so inconsiderate. Don't worry about it. It's not such a big deal. I can't hear a thing. Excuse me. Can you keep it down? Sure. Sorry about that. Someone's phone is ringing. Honey, I think it's your phone. Did you forget to switch it off? Oh no, you're right. That's so embarrassing. Do you mind keeping it down? I'm trying to watch a movie here. Okay, great. Now with the dialogue slower, it's really understandable. Yeah, I think you could catch those keywords a lot better. Perfect. So now we are ready to look at putting it together. Putting it together. So in putting it together, we help you use a great phrase in different ways. And today's phrase is, do you mind? Do you mind? Do you mind? Okay, so let's listen to some examples on how you can use this phrase in different situations. Example one. Do you mind holding my coat for me? Example two. Oh, I forgot my wallet. Do you mind paying for dinner? Example three. Do you mind turning off your phone? So this phrase is usually pretty polite. I could say to you, Marco, do you mind holding my coat for me? And that's really polite. Yeah, so would you mind, do you mind are very polite phrases. But depending on your voice and how you use your tone, it could be a little bit sarcastic, right? Yeah, it could be a little bit rude if you say, would you mind keeping it down? Exactly, like we heard in our dialogue. Yeah, so that's not so polite. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in English, you have to be careful because your tone of voice tells the other person how you're feeling, if you're angry, sad, or just like in any other language. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, using a phrase like, do you mind, is a great phrase, but make sure you keep a positive tone in your voice. <laughs> exactly. So now that we've talked about all these great things, we can listen to the dialogue a third time but it'll be at its normal speed. Those people in front of us are making so much noise. It's so inconsiderate. Don't worry about it. It's not such a big deal. No, I can't hear a thing. Excuse me, can you keep it down? Sure, sorry about that. <gasps> Someone's phone is ringing. Honey, I think it's your phone. Did you forget to switch it off? Oh no, you're right. <sighs> That's so embarrassing. Do you mind keeping it down? I'm trying to watch a movie here.
So I know that in different countries, there are different habits about watching movies. Yeah, that's definitely true. Erica, what's it like in Canada? Well, in Canada, it's really common to eat popcorn and candy and、uh, maybe chips while you're watching a movie. But if your phone rings in the movie theater, this is a big problem. <laughs> I imagine it is. I mean, I would be upset also. What about in Ecuador? Well, in Ecuador and in South America, usually people can bring in food from the outside. Really? Yeah, so it's not really uncommon, depending on the city,、um, to find people bringing in chicken or some sort of like really smelly food. No way. <laughs> so you get either really hungry or really upset, but that's what happens. You know, I used to live in Switzerland, and in Switzerland, you would have to eat before you watch the movie. There was no popcorn, no soda, no candy inside the movie theater. Can you imagine that? I could not live with that because the whole purpose of going to the movies is to have some popcorn and relax and have a good time. You can't have a movie without popcorn. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked a lot about how to ask someone to be quiet today. And I hope that you'll go out and try a few of these phrases in your daily life. Yes, and I hope also that you visit our website at EnglishPod.com and leave all your questions and comments. Marco and I are there every day, so we'll be happy to answer your questions. But until next time, bye. bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Not thinking of the feelings of other people. Not thoughtful. Inconsiderate. Not a big problem. Not such a big deal. Unable to hear. Can't hear a thing. Be quiet. Keep it down. Turn off. Switch off. Could you please? Do you mind? Very loud. Noisy. Impolite. Rude. To interrupt, bother, or upset. To disturb. To speak or make noise when someone else is speaking. To interrupt. To speak very softly. To whisper. Let's try that faster. To speak or make noise when someone else is speaking. To interrupt. Impolite. Rude. Not a big problem. Not such a big deal. Not thinking of the feelings of other people. Not thoughtful. Inconsiderate. Unable to hear. Can't hear a thing. To speak very softly. To whisper. To interrupt. Bother or upset. To disturb. Be quiet. Keep it down. Could you please? Do you mind? Turn off. Switch off. Very loud. Noisy. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Inconsiderate. Stop being so inconsiderate and turn down the TV. I'm trying to sleep. Inconsiderate. It was inconsiderate of you to make me wait 25 minutes. Inconsiderate.
Erin is so inconsiderate. She's always late for meetings. Not such a big deal. It won't be such a big deal if you forget to wash the dishes tonight. Not such a big deal. I don't think it will be such a big deal if you're five minutes late tomorrow. Not such a big deal. I just made one small mistake. It's not such a big deal. Can you speak louder? I can't hear a thing. What? I'm sorry, I can't hear a thing. This music is too loud. Something's wrong with my phone. I couldn't hear a thing when you called. Keep it down. It's four in the morning. Can you keep it down? Keep it down. Keep it down. I'm on the phone. Keep it down. Can you keep it down? I'm trying to get some work done. Switch off. Remember to switch off your mobile phone before class. Switch off. Can you switch the lights off before you leave the office? Switch off. Oh no, the TV's still on. I forgot to switch it off. Do you mind? Do you mind holding my coat for me? Do you mind? I forgot my wallet. Do you mind paying for dinner? Do you mind? Do you mind turning off your phone? Welcome back, English learners. My name is Marco, and I am joined by Erica. How are you, Erica? I'm doing great, Marco, and you? Excellent. I'm doing really well, and I'm really excited about our lesson for today. That's right. We've got an intermediate lesson today, and we're going to study some real English. English that you use every day, right? That's right. English that native speakers really use. Exactly. And today, as Erica mentioned, we have an intermediate lesson. And not only is it intermediate, but it's a business lesson. Yes.、Yeah, so today we're listening in to a sales meeting and we're going to learn some great, useful English to talk about sales strategies. So, we're going to learn English for sales strategies, for making suggestions, and for responding to suggestions. Great. So, why don't we take a look at our vocabulary preview for today? Vocabulary preview. So, our vocabulary preview is a part of our lesson when we teach you some really important words that will help you to understand the dialogue better. Okay, great. So, that is what vocabulary preview is. We have two words for you today. And we can start off by looking at the first one. Our first word today is drive sales. Drive sales. Drive sales. To drive sales. And that means to increase sales. Right, to sell more. Exactly. So to drive sales. Okay, so now let's look at our second word. And it's an interesting one it's promotion. 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 So, Erica, what is a promotion exactly? Okay, so here we're not really talking about getting a better job, right? Okay, yeah, not like a job promotion. No, we're talking about a marketing strategy. Okay, so I can give you an example. Suppose that I want to buy shampoo. Uh huh. And if I go to the supermarket and I see buy one and get one free, 
So that's a two for one. That's a two for one promotion. Yeah. Right? Okay. That's a sales promotion. Or perhaps the shampoo in the supermarket is less expensive than usual. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Usually, maybe it costs five dollars, but today it costs four dollars. That's a sales promotion. Great. So that's a really good marketing strategy. Exactly. And we'll hear this word in our dialogue today. Great. So we are ready to listen to our dialogue. It's gonna be pretty fast, so it might be a little bit difficult to understand. But don't worry if you don't understand everything, because later in this lesson we're gonna explain all the important words and phrases. All right, people, we're holding this meeting today because we've got to do something about our sales, and we need to do it now. I want concrete solutions. How do you plan to drive sales? Roger. Well, um, in fact, we're the most expensive in the market, so maybe we need to lower our prices to match the competitors? <laughs> lower our prices. Not very creative. It'll never fly with Swan. What kind of thinking is that? Jeez. Anyone have a better plan? Natalie. Um... Perhaps um, a promotion. Maybe a two-for-one offer or, or something like that. What? It's the same thing. Bad idea. Really bad idea. Damn it, people. Come on. Think. The CEO will be here any minute. Hello, Mr. Swan. Oh, Mr. Swan. Hello, Mr. Swan. Do we have any ideas yet? Yes, Mr. Swan. We were kind of considering a two-for-one offer to get more competitive. A two-for-one promotion. Hmm. I kind of like the sound of that. It sounds like something we should consider. Yeah, exactly. That's just what I was thinking. In fact, it's a brilliant idea. I'm glad we thought of that. Very creative. Okay, so uh, an interesting manager, right? I don't know about interesting. Maybe I would think bad manager. <laughs> We're going to talk about him later on in the show. But now let's take a look at our language takeaway. Language takeaway. Okay, so language takeaway is the part of our lesson where we teach you the most important words from the dialogue. All these words that we are going to focus on can be found in today's dialogue. Exactly. So we have three words for you today. Let's look at the first one. Match the competitors. Match the competitors. Match the competitors. Match the competitors. Great. So we have some examples for you so you can listen and try and see if you can figure out what match the competitors really means. Example one. We guarantee that we can match the competitor's lowest price. Example two. It's impossible for us to match the competitors. Our costs are just too high. Example 3. Do you think we can match our competitors' prices and still keep our quality high? Ah, okay, so I see that match the competitors means to be as good as or better than other companies in the same industry. Exactly. Match the competitors. All right, so let's move to our second word today for language takeaways, and it is in the market. In the market. In the market. In the market. We heard this phrase in the dialogue, and it means in the industry. Exactly. I can say, for example, English Pod is the best language pod in the market. So, of all the podcasts that teach English, English Pod is the best. Of course, no yeah. doubt about it. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> right. Or I can give you another example iPods are the most popular MP3 players in the market. So, of all the MP3 players in the world, iPods are the most popular. Popular. So let's move to our final word for today, and it is. It'll never fly. It'll never fly. It'll never fly. It will never fly. 
So this phrase sounds a little bit strange. I know, fly? Are we talking about an airplane yeah. here? What's going on? <laughs> exactly, but we're not. So, so we're going to give you some examples and try and guess what it'll never fly really means. Example one. This marketing plan will never fly. It's just too expensive. Example two. What? You want to sell bikinis in Alaska? That'll never fly. Example three. Brad told me his idea for a film script, but the story will never fly. It's not interesting enough. So it means it won't work. It won't work. It's not a good idea. They'll never agree. Exactly. Great, so now we've seen a lot of useful phrases and we are ready to listen to our dialogue a second time. But this time it's going to be slow. So you'll be able to understand a little bit better and you'll be able to hear the words and phrases we were just talking about. All right, people. We're holding this meeting today because we've got to do something about our sales. And we need to do it now. I want concrete solutions. How do you plan to drive sales, Roger? Well, um, in fact, we're the most expensive in the market. So maybe we need to lower our prices to match the competitors. Lower our prices. Not very creative. It'll never fly with Swan. What kind of thinking is that? Jeez. Anybody else have a better plan? Natalie? Um, perhaps, um, a promotion. Maybe a two-for-one offer or something like that. What? That's the same thing. Bad idea. Really bad idea. Damn it, people, come on. Think. The CEO will be here any minute. Hello, Mr. Swan. Oh, Mr. Swan. Hello, Mr. Swan. Do we have any ideas yet? Yes, Mr. Swan. We were kind of considering a two-for-one offer to get more competitive. A two-for-one promotion. Hmm. I kind of like the sound of that. It sounds like something we should consider. Yeah, exactly. That's just what I was thinking. In fact, that's a brilliant idea. I'm glad we thought of that. Very creative. Okay, great. I hope everyone understands a lot better now. And I hope everyone could listen out for some of those key words. Right, so now it's time for us to take a look at Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. So with Fluency Builder, we try to help you increase your fluency. We take a word or phrase that you already know and show you how to say it a little bit more naturally, a little bit more like a native English speaker. Right, and we have three of these words for you today. Yeah. Let's start with the first one. Okay, so often students will say something like... I'll be here soon. Or... I will arrive soon. Right. And these sentences are correct. They're totally fine, but I think there's a better way to say this. Right. And we heard it in the dialogue. So let's listen to what the person in the dialogue said. The CEO will be here any minute. The CEO will be here any minute. Okay, so be here any minute. He'll be here any minute. It just sounds a little bit more natural. Yeah, I think I use this phrase quite often. He'll be here any minute. He'll be here soon. Yeah. Great. Okay, so let's move on to our second phrase for Fluency Builder. So this phrase will help you to learn how to say, I'm thinking about something in a better sounding way. Right, so you can say something like, we are thinking about a sales strategy. Or, that sounds like something we should think about. Right, and it's perfectly correct. Yeah, there's no problem with this. But in the dialogue, we heard something a little bit different, so let's listen to it. It sounds like something we should consider. It sounds like something we should consider. 
So consider sounds like a pretty natural way of saying it, right? Yeah, and you know what? I think it sounds really kind of smart. Yeah, it sounds more formal, even. A little more times. professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good word. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So let's move on to our third word. Marco, you already said our third word. <laughs> oh yeah, I actually did. Brilliant.、Um, that's a great word right there. Yeah. A lot of people might say that's a great idea or great. But in the dialogue, we heard another way of saying the same idea. That's a brilliant idea. That's a brilliant idea. Okay, so this is great, but I would have to say that it's a little bit more British English. Yeah, I'd agree with you there, but I also think it sort of gives more power to this idea that it's a good idea, brilliant idea. That it's a really, really good idea. Yeah, yeah. And but, I like that word. Yeah. Okay, so we're ready to listen to our dialogue again a third time, but at its normal speed. All right, people. We're holding this meeting today because we've got to do something about our sales, and we need to do it now. I want concrete solutions. How do you plan to drive sales, Roger? Well,、um, in fact, we're the most expensive in the market, so maybe we need to lower our prices to match the competitors. <laughs> lower our prices? Not very creative. It'll never fly with Swan. What kind of thinking is that? Geez. Anyone have a better plan, Natalie? Um. Perhaps、um, a promotion, maybe a two-for-one offer, or, or something like that. What? It's the same thing. Bad idea. Really bad idea. Damn it, people! Come on, think. The CEO will be here any minute. Hello, Mr. Swan. Oh, Mr. Swan. Hello, Mr. Swan. Do we have any ideas yet? Yes, Mr. Swan. We were kind of considering a two-for-one offer to get more competitive. A two-for-one promotion. Hmm. I kind of like the sound of that. It sounds like something we should consider. Yeah, exactly. That's just what I was thinking. In fact, it's a brilliant idea. I'm glad we thought of that. Very creative. All right. So listening to this dialogue makes you think about this boss. I'm pretty sure everyone has had a manager or a supervisor that's similar to this guy. Yeah, this boss,、uh, Clark. I would have to say he sounds like a terrible person to work for. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. If you're a manager, you want to motivate your employees. I think it's the most important thing a manager does is to encourage his or her employees and to help support them to grow and to be better people in the job. And this guy is totally not doing this. And you can tell because they are a little bit scared of talking, and he cuts them off with saying, "Oh, it's a bad idea. Give me a better idea," and stuff like that. Yeah, I could never work for a guy like this. <laughs> you know, my first boss that I had when I first entered the workforce. Um, I was in a very junior position, and I was working for a large company. And the general manager of the company, he was amazing. He was so encouraging. He knew every single employee's name, first name, and he would, you know, make an effort to stop and say hello and ask them how things were going. And you know what? This left me with such a good feeling about the company that I really wanted to work hard for this company and try my best. And I think that I've never met such a great boss as this guy. No, I think that's true. Definitely, if you have a boss that's encouraging and motivating like that, it makes you work harder and makes you feel part of a really special team. And that's something we can all agree on. And I'm sure all our managers out there do the same. Well, you know what? I hope some of our listeners log on to our website and maybe they can tell us some experiences with bad managers or good managers or. If they are managers, how they handle things. Yeah, and hopefully they can use some of these great phrases that we talked about today. Great! So be sure everyone to visit our website at EnglishPod.com, and where you can find a lot of other information and really good resources to continue improving your English. That's right. So thanks for listening today, everyone. And until next time, this is goodbye. Bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. A real or specific solution to a problem. Concrete solutions. Increase sales. Drive sales. 
in the industry. In the market. Be as good as or better than other companies in the same industry. To match the competitors. Will not work. Will not be approved. Will never fly. Something done to make people aware of a product. Promotion. Will arrive very soon. Be here any minute. Thinking about. To consider. Excellent. Brilliant. As good as or better than others of the same type. Competitive. Make sales successfully. Win sales. Plans for a company's sales activities. Sales strategy. The process a customer goes through when deciding to buy a product. Sales cycle. To sell more than others. To outsell. When a customer buys the same brand over and over. Customer loyalty. Let's try that faster. Excellent. Brilliant. Will arrive very soon. Be here any minute. To sell more than others. To outsell. Will not work. Will not be approved. Will never fly. The process a customer goes through when deciding to buy a product. Sales cycle. Something done to make people aware of a product. Promotion. In the industry. In the market. Increase sales. Drive sales. Be as good as or better than other companies in the same industry. To match the competitors. As good as or better than others of the same type. Competitive. Make sales successfully. Win sales. Plans for a company's sales activities. Sales strategy. When a customer buys the same brand over and over. Customer loyalty. Thinking about. To consider. A real or specific solution to a problem. Concrete solutions. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Drive sales. If we want to drive sales, I think we need to spend more time training our salespeople. Drive sales. The most important thing for us right now is to focus on driving sales. Drive sales. I think if we increase our marketing budget, it will help us to drive sales in the fourth quarter. I expect each of you to come to the meeting tomorrow with concrete solutions for our recruitment problem. Dale, have you come up with any concrete solutions? I'm sorry, but I just can't offer any concrete solutions right now. Promotion.
We can't have a sales promotion right now because our costs are too high. Promotion. The department store is offering a promotion. Everything is 50% off. Let's go shopping. Promotion. A two-for-one promotion might be a way to attract new customers. We guarantee that we can match the competitor's lowest price. It's impossible for us to match the competitors. Our costs are just too high. Do you think we can match the competitors' quality and still keep our price low? In the market. English Pod is the best podcast in the market. In the market. iPods are the most popular MP3 players in the market. In the market. Our product is the cheapest in the market. Will never fly. This marketing plan will never fly. We just don't have enough money for it. Will never fly. I like that idea, but it'll never fly with management. Will never fly. Brad told me his idea for a film script, but the story will never fly. It's not interesting enough. Be here any minute. Hurry up. The bus will be here any minute. Be here any minute. Nick just called. He said he should be here any minute. Be here any minute. Is everything prepared for the meeting? The CEO will be here any minute. To consider, we're considering a sales promotion. To consider, I think we need to consider a new sales strategy. To consider, have you considered reducing the price? Brilliant. That's a brilliant idea. Brilliant. This is a brilliant marketing plan. Brilliant. What a brilliant suggestion. Thanks, Roger. Hello, English learners, and welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco, and my name is Catherine. And today we're talking about money, but this time we're talking about borrowing money. Right. So we're asking for money. We're going to the bank, and we are asking for a loan. But before we go, why don't we take a look at vocabulary preview? Vocabulary preview. Okay, so a loan is some money that you get from the bank. So we're talking about requesting a loan today. All right, so you request for a loan or you ask for a loan. Exactly. So to request is to ask. Okay, very good. And that's the word that we have for vocabulary preview. So let's listen to the dialogue for the first time. Hello, sir. May I help you? 
Yes, I would like some information for requesting a loan. Very well. Here are the general terms of our loan policies. We pride ourselves in having the lowest interest rate in the country for personal loans. I see. So let me get this straight. If I borrow, let's say, ten thousand dollars, how much will I have to pay each month? It depends on how long you take to pay it back. If we lend you ten thousand dollars at an annual interest rate of ten percent for forty-eight months, you would have to pay each month a portion of the loan, which is called the principal, and another small portion of the annual interest rate. This, of course, is considering that you don't default on a payment. It sounds good, but there's just one problem. I have a terrible credit score. That is a very serious problem, you see. The bank must assess your personal information, past loans, assets, and any other relevant information, such as your credit score, in order to approve your loan. You know what? I don't really need the money. Thanks, anyways. All right, we're back. So now, why don't we take a look at some of the key words that we'll find in language takeaway? Language takeaway. All right. So on language takeaway today, we have a couple of different words. Why don't we start off with the loan policies? Okay. So a policy is like a rule.、Um, for example, a government can have policies, but in this case, a loan policy is the the rules regarding the loan that you have. Right. So maybe the loan policies could include、uh, how long, what's the maximum length of your loan, or maybe what's the annual interest rate, etc. How much you have to pay each month. Exactly.、Like、so a loan policy is the rules related to the loan that you've taken out. And、uh, we have some very, very important words following this. They go together. So the first word is to borrow. Okay, so you probably know this word already. To borrow. So can I borrow your pen? Can I borrow some money? Sure. Let me give you my pen. Let me give you my money. Okay. But wait, <laughs> giving is different because giving means I don't have to get it back. Right. So if you want to give it to someone temporarily, then you lend them your pen or you lend them some money. Great. So to borrow is to to take something from someone, knowing that you will have to give it back later. Right. And to lend is to be the to, is to give it to someone. Right.、Uh-huh. So. Can you lend me your pen? That means, can you give it to me, please? Right, and this is a common mistake with language learners, especially English learners,、um, that they make the mistake of using borrow、uh, instead of lend. So, can you borrow me some money?、Eh. Right. So, can you lend me some money? Sure, but I expect you to pay me back later. Okay, very good. And if I pay you back later, I'll include an interest rate. Will you really? No, not really. No, not really. <laughs> Mostly, it's banks that ask for an interest rate. So, in this case, an interest rate means the amount of money that a bank will charge you. In addition to the money that you owe them, exactly. So it's called an interest rate, and it's a rate because it's a percentage. So like five percent. Exactly, five, ten percent. That is an interest rate. And now moving on, if you have a loan and you have to pay each month, be careful to not default on your payments. Okay, default in the banking world. This means to not be able to pay your loan.、Mm-hmm. So that means that、uh, if I owe one thousand dollars to you, Bank of Marco, <laughs> and I don't have the money, I can't pay for it. Then I default.、Mm-hmm. So to be late or to not make the payment. It's a verb to default. Very good. And well, the person asking for the loan has a small problem. His credit score is not very good. Okay, I think he calls it terrible. And one of the ways that you get a terrible credit score is by defaulting on a loan.、Right. But it also means that maybe you borrow money or you have credit cards and you can't pay off your bills.、Mm-hmm. And so a credit score is very important in America, and it's like a report card for your for your finances. Right. So for example, if your credit score is a report card. And you have an A credit score. That means that the、uh, banks won't have a problem with lending you money. Or if you want to buy a new car, it'll be okay. But if you don't pay your bills on time or you default on your loans, then maybe you'll have a, a C or a D, and then、Ooh. people will not really lend you money in the future. They won't trust you. Exactly. All right. So that's credit score. That's all the words we have for fluency builder. Why don't we listen to the dialogue again, and we'll be back shortly.
Hello, sir. May I help you? Yes, I would like some information for requesting a loan. Very well. Here are the general terms of our loan policies. We pride ourselves in having the lowest interest rate in the country for personal loans. I see. So let me get this straight. If I borrow, let's say, ten thousand dollars, how much will I have to pay each month? It depends on how long you take to pay it back. If we lend you ten thousand dollars at an annual interest rate of ten percent for forty-eight months, you would have to pay each month a portion of the loan, which is called the principal, and another small portion of the annual interest rate. This, of course, is considering that you don't default on a payment. It sounds good, but there's just one problem. I have a terrible credit score. That is a very serious problem, you see. The bank must assess your personal information, past loans, assets, and any other relevant information, such as your credit score, in order to approve your loan. You know what? I don't really need the money. Thanks, anyways. All right, we're back. So now, why don't we take a look at three key phrases on Fluency Builder? Fluency Builder. Let me get this straight. We're gonna do Fluency Builder. That's right. Wait, I don't wait. So, <laughs> okay, so this is our first phrase. Let me get this straight, and this is a fixed phrase that means we always say it the same way.、Mm -hmm. Wait, let me get this straight. We always say it the same way. <laughs> right. So you're asking for a confirmation, or you're repeating what that person said just to be sure that it's correct. Exactly. So maybe you don't understand something, or maybe you think you might have misunderstood.、Mm -hmm. You say, "Hey." So let me get this straight, and you repeat what the person just said.、Mm -hmm. It's a way for you to, like you say, get confirmation on what you've heard. Very good. Let me get this straight. And now moving on, we have the phrase "pay it back." You have to pay it back. Okay. And so in this case, we have the verb to pay, but we also have the word back. So pay it back means to repay.、Mm -hmm. So if we take out a loan, we、mm -hmm. obviously have to pay it back to the bank. Right. So you have to pay the loan back. Okay, so just remember that these words often go together to、mm -hmm. pay it back. I'll pay you back, I promise.、Right. Can you lend me a dollar? I'll pay you back tomorrow. Ah,、eh, don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. And the bank started off saying, "We pride ourselves in having the lowest interest rate in the country." Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So we pride ourselves. What does it mean if I if I pride myself in something? The word pride means to be really、um, happy about something. That has to do with yourself. So,、mm -hmm. so something that you're proud of is something that you want to tell a lot of other people about. So, for example, a father may say, "My son just got straight A's, and he's an excellent soccer player,、mm -hmm. and so he's proud of his son."、Mm -hmm. But to be to pride oneself means to to、you're, be really happy with the way that you do something. Right. So, for example, if I've never smoked, right? So I can say, "I pride myself in being a non-smoker." Or I could say I pride myself in always saving lots of money for my、mm -hmm. paycheck. Very good. So that means I try to do this because I know it's a good thing. But you feel very good about this, and you feel that you know people should be proud of you as well. So、okay. we could ask our students here: What do you pride yourselves in as,、right. as a challenge? As a challenge for the website. All right. So、uh, why don't we listen to the dialogue for the last time, and we'll be back. Hello, sir. May I help you? Yes, I would like some information for requesting a loan. Very well. Here are the general terms of our loan policies. We pride ourselves in having the lowest interest rate in the country for personal loans. I see. So let me get this straight. If I borrow, let's say, ten thousand dollars, how much will I have to pay each month? It depends on how long you take to pay it back. If we lend you ten thousand dollars at an annual interest rate of ten percent for forty-eight months, you would have to pay each month a portion of the loan, which is called the principal, and another small portion of the annual interest rate. This, of course, is considering that you don't default on a payment. It sounds good, but there's just one problem. I have a terrible credit score. That is a very serious problem, you see. The bank must assess your personal information. Past loans, assets, and any other relevant information, such as your credit score, in order to approve your loan. You know what? I don't really need the money. Thanks, anyways.
All right, very good. So as you say, saving is important. And well, sometimes, do you think, do you think you need a loan? I think sometimes people need loans because they want to go into business, for example. Mm-hmm. So uh, people who want to go into small businesses or open their own companies need startup capital. And so this mm-hmm. is a really great example of when people don't have the money lying around and will go to find uh, a bank that will give them a loan. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's really important, especially for the economy of a country, for business loans or small business loans to be available because sometimes it's very difficult to find a bank that will actually lend a person money to start a business. It, usually they, they won't have a problem with lending them money to buy a new car. Right. But, but to start up a business, it's it's completely the opposite. It is. And one of the really popular trends in foreign investment right now is called micro lending. So mm-hmm. micro loans. And that means that um, if I want to help people in a very poor country, mm-hmm. um, I can donate, I can lend $100 for someone to buy a sewing machine Mm -hmm. or for someone to buy a small computer, Mm -hmm. $500 for a small computer, and that is a micro loan. It's a very, very small loan Mm -hmm. for one thing, and that can help them towards their goal of being a business person. Right, and you're not really getting money out of it, though. You're not charging like 100% interest rate. You're not. You're charging like 1% or 2% interest, very low interest, and you're giving people a chance to pay the money back because it's such a small amount. Wow, that's really good. A really positive thing. Mm -hmm. Very good. So if you have any questions, any comments, or any suggestions, please come to our website at EnglishPod.com and we'll see you guys there. Bye, everyone. Bye.